hey, let's try vlogging on the phone. I don't know. I have the day off, it's Friday, so I thought I'll have a nice long weekend to vlog and do stuff. But then things didn't go according to plan, the week was horrible, I'm all stressed out, and now I have an appointment to donate blood because they called and they needed someone to donate and I was available. So kind of ruined my plans, but that's okay. I'm a little behind on my reading as well. I had planned to finish my novella, The Diary of a Nobody, yesterday, but I fell asleep too early. I kind of find it boring. I have about 40 pages left and nothing much is happening. It's from the 1880s, I think, and it's middle-aged man being weird, awkward, and mostly annoying. Hmm, I don't know. I'll just finish it. I haven't decided what else I want to read afterwards, so we'll see that. I'm listening to Taste on audio by Stanley Tucci. It's all about food and it's very easy to listen to, very comfortable. He talks about his experience and life with food and a lot of recipes and food. So that's enjoyable. And now I have to go. Talk to you later. And I'm back from donating blood plates. I actually don't even know what the English word for that is. Thrombocytes, blood types, blood plates. Anyways, I spent an hour hooked up to a machine and had my blood cycled and filtered. And now I'm kind of hungry. I finished listening to Taste by Stanley Tucci, which made me more hungry. This is seriously a side effect. He's talking about food and gives you recipes all the time and how tasty it is. And the way he talks about food makes you even more hungry, makes you want to eat it more. Up to the point where I felt like I want to eat spaghetti bolognese because he described it there and how wonderful it tasted. And I was just like, I like spaghetti bolognese. I haven't made that in years. So I went to the supermarket and tried to remember how to cook it and then I cooked it and now I'm going to eat it. I'll finish reading The Diary of a Nobody while I'm eating and then probably not read anything more today. I don't know, but you know. And I finished reading The Diary of a Nobody. I must say this feels boring to me now because I'm not interested in that time area or I haven't read about that time area in a while, I have no reference points, but this might actually have been an interesting contemporary read because it's looking at two generations, basically. The diary is written by a middle-aged man who just moved to the country or the suburbs with his wife and his son didn't move with them, but then appeared later. I did not completely get that or miss that or forgot. Who cares? Anyways, the son is in his early 20s, late tweens, just starting off work. And we see a lot of generational conflict going on in ideas of how to live, where to live, and how to interact with other people. We see a lot of interaction with our mm, narrator, the diary writer, and his two best friends. And there is comments on those types of people. So I have the idea that maybe this book was for contemporaries, probably a lot more interesting and a lot more critical or satirical, comical. I don't know, because I think I'm missing a lot of the things that contemporaries would pick up on or people who are studying that time period. Like I said, it was first published or written in 1889. And so if someone is interested in that area and knows a lot more about the little things, the societal things, um, yeah, the characters and the type or way of life back then might pick up on a lot more little things and even fun things that I didn't. Overall, I think it's a quick read. It was 150 pages, let's be real, with illustrations. And it was okay to read. It gave an insight in the normal life of a normal person. He's just a clerk and I don't even know what kind of company that is. He's just a clerk. And yeah, you get insights in them not being the most popular crowd or the most wealthy crowd and what they're doing. For that, I was okay. Other than that, I don't know if I would recommend it to anyone, but if you're interested in the time period and feel that you could get something of a commentary or criticism or satire satire out of it, go give it a try. It's about 5, 5.30 now and I'm already fell asleep reading this one, so I'm not going to read any more now. I'll 
thinking of trying Loveless. I keep debating back and forth. I don't know if I have misunderstandings of this book. I keep thinking I'm interested, but then I'm also thinking it's not something I'm interested in reading in. I'll tell you tomorrow what I read. Now, I think I'm going to spend the rest of the evening watching or rather re-watching my love from another star, from this star. Netflix has a weird habit of giving strange names to shows in Germany. So whatever name I use is the one that Netflix shows me and IMDb calls it differently often. Anyways, I am re-watching that this today, probably the rest of it because this week was stressful and I couldn't deal with new things and I wanted to have something comfortable. So that's a good way to end the day. Talk to you tomorrow. Good morning. I decided to start Loveless last night and I sampled it and then I got it, despite not being in love with the writing. Now let me explain what my problem with the book is. In general, I was interested about the plot or that it's about an Ace Arrow character. And it's supposedly very good, but it's always marketed as children's book here. So wherever I looked, the age range was set for 5 to 11, something like that. And I must be honest, that's not really something I'm interested in reading right now. Also, it won a YA prize, which is not bad, it's a good thing, but it's also YA. So I was confused where even to set this book, where it is yeah, where I can put it in the writing. And somehow at one point I thought it was a graphic novel. I don't know how that happened. But I discovered that it's a proper novel of 400 something pages. So something longer than I would like to invest in right now. That's another issue I have with the book, but I'm curious about the book. So I sampled it and I must say I was confused why it's labeled as children's book or even categorized there because it starts with prom night. So that's not really for children in the age range, I would say. So I'm glad about that. But then I have some issues with the writing. I don't particularly enjoy reading it. It's so far I'm 60 pages in and I like to read about the character. I like what happens or the way it is presented and the way her character is presented and the struggles she has. I'll talk about more of that later when I've read more. But I don't particularly like the writing and I think it's because I'm older. I'm 46 now and this book is geared for people that are in their early teens or late teens or early 20s. and. It references things or the way it talks about things is not the way I speak and the way I see the world or understand the world. It's completely normal. That's a gen different generation. That's not the problem. But that explains why I don't particularly like the writing. That doesn't make it bad writing. It just makes it not properly suitable or pleasurable for me. I'll tell you more when I've read more about the book. And it's Tuesday afternoon. Let's pretend that I didn't lose the rest of the weekend to feeling down and that vlogging on my phone didn't crash it. Yes, I did manage to read half of Loveless so far. So I wanted to continue talking about that because even though I have my issues with some of the writing aspects, it reads rather well. You can sort of fly through it rather fast and take in the action. Once you started reading, picking it up somehow has been a problem since yesterday. But that might be another issue. So what is Loveless actually about? I told you that it starts with the prom. We have our main narrator and she tells us about her prom and the main issue that she has, that she feels like she missed out on the teenage experience, didn't do the right things, mostly because she hasn't been in a relationship and kissed anyone and things at the prom don't go so well so it turns out everybody pressuring her making fun of her for not having done that which increases her feelings of feeling weird unnormal or not like you should feel or be and then things move on to college university i'm not exactly sure they keep talking about a college system but it's also a university that might be an english thing anyways so she has a roommate and her two best friends are also at the same university and they don't end up living in the same college but in different colleges which has some form of seeing less of each other but they still do a lot of things together and what they're really connected by is theater so that's how they all met and that's how they became friends and that's also how the new roommate 
becomes friends and in the circle of things. That's like the main setup of where we are. But we see our main narrator really trying to get the college experience, the university experience, to branch out, to try new things and to kiss and to have relationships and be open. But every time she tries, she feels disgusted and really not into it. She often speaks of herself really being into romance and love story and fan fiction. She reads a lot of fan fiction and that she knows everything about love and that she wants it, but somehow she doesn't. And we see her conflicting thoughts. And that's what I actually think is really, really well done. That you really see her working her way through thoughts, how her feelings are trying to digest what's actually going on. Is it normal? Is it not normal? What's going on? What do I feel? And do I maybe just think I want that? And all the things there. Like I said, I'm only halfway through, but we see our main character making a lot of progress and finding out what she actually identifies as or what might be the issue, what's wrong, or wrong is the wrong word because nothing is wrong. That is something I'm struggling with. You know me, I don't really like labels and this book is dealing with a lot of labels not in a way that it puts labels on people, but it's using labels to describe things. And I personally don't like labeling things, mostly because labels are sticky and you can never peel them off properly. And they're limiting, but they also somehow help finding your place and identifying. So that's the part I'm not so sure about what I feel about this book. The book definitely mentions a lot and makes a point that there shouldn't be any peer pressure, but it also points out how much peer pressure there is to have a relationship, to be into someone. It's not specific that you need to be in a boy or a girl or a girl for a boy, but that you have a relationship, that you want to have love, that you want to have that kissing, sex and things. And our main character is often contemplating like, do people really do that? Isn't that just something that's happening in the movies? And that is really, so well portrayed. I really, really enjoy that. How our main character is discovering that she is asexual, that she probably doesn't have any interest in having a relationship, that her feelings of idea of wanting love is just the idea of that, but that she probably doesn't really want to have a relationship that's built on whatever media tells of love is. Part of this whole college system is that students that are new get mentors that are older and our main character gets a older mentor that's also president of a queer society or pride society and so has a lot of experience and is really supportive and i think this is a very good character in giving her room and helping her to figure out things and also advising her and helping her understand things and talk things through. Overall, I'm enjoying this book mostly for how realistic it's portrayed, for how realistic it shows the feelings of our main character. All the other characters around are also not just flat and stock characters. They all have personality and go through things. And we see some of that from the outside, but we're not as deeply involved as in our main character, of course, because we're in her head with first person narration. So really enjoying that. I'll tell you more once I've finished. And it's Friday morning again. Let's quickly wrap up the vlog as I finished Loveless last night. I ended up really enjoying the story. There are still the issues with the writing, but I think that's mostly generational and yeah, YA writing that's not properly interested or that I'm not into anymore. And also a lot of descriptions of clothes, what everyone was wearing all the time that I couldn't remember. And I don't know if I missed some secret signs that teenagers these days have in recognizing what they wear, or if there is something there. I might have missed a lot of the signs that are generational clues that I didn't pick up on. But overall, I liked how everything wrapped up. Like I said before, we learn a lot about our main character and her discovering her sexuality and coming to terms with that. But we also see a lot about her friends and interacting with her friends, how her discovery or her yeah, quest for her sexuality sounds weird and fantasy-like, but her discovery or her self-identification and learning more about herself, finding out who she is, 
at university, at starting to become an adult, and all these things are really well presented. And we see how it's interacting or affecting her friendships and her relationship with her future, the worries she has. All of that is really well done. I really think this is a proper and good presentation of the asexuality situation and the worries that come along with that. Also, in her friends, she has a lot of queer friends, so there's other issues that people deal with, not only asexuality, but commitment in relationships, being gay, being an outsider. A lot of topics are mentioned and touched upon and really well handled, in my opinion. I think this book is somewhat educational and entertaining because it presents a sexuality that is not that commonly known, that people have little experience with and have little understanding. What I really enjoyed that she presents all the time is how our main character always thought that everyone was like her. And that's the thing we all are. We think we're normal and everyone is like us, but we don't really know that how we see the world is not how everyone else sees the world. In her case, in her asexual understanding of how things work and how things are presented, she frequently rediscovers and needs to be reminded or reminds herself and discovers that she misinterpreted things when in media she always thought it was just a media that people constantly talked or thought about sex. But all her friends were like, no, that's kind of what we do. And it's enlightening for her to realize that's her being asexual, that she doesn't do that, that she always just thought it was exaggerated that people spend so much time worrying and thinking about sex. I really enjoyed that. I have the issue with labeling things, but I understand that people find it helpful to find a label to identify as something. For me, different generation maybe. But all of that is also well done and handled with care. And I can highly recommend this. Even though the writing is maybe not to your liking, the story is really captivating. And when I picked it up, I couldn't put it down. But for some reason, when I put it down, I forgot to pick it up again. That's why it took so long and other life stress. Anyways, let me know in comments if you've read any of the books I talked about in this vlog, if you enjoyed the vlog, and if you lasted this long. Thank you very much. I will talk to you soon, maybe in another vlog. We'll see. I'm really sad that vlogging on my phone didn't work out because it's so much easier than setting up cameras and everything. But I need to figure out what went wrong there. Anyways, thank you all for watching and talk to you in comments. Bye-bye.